Hi everybody, my name is Trent Corey and I'm an animator at Disney Feature Animation in California and I've been here since 2012. I actually, Frozen was the first film I worked on, the very first one, and since then I've worked on Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, and Frozen 2. And I was very lucky on Frozen 2 to get to supervise two of my favorite characters right here, Olaf and Bruni, and the Wind Spirit, Gale. So today, which I couldn't have Gale here, I can't have a pile of leaves here, what am I going to do? So, uh, today we're going to learn how to draw Bruni, and I'd love if you drew along with me. This is for all ages, and really we're just going to keep this fun. We're going to draw light with a red pencil. I'm going to draw digitally, so you can choose to do that too. And then we're going to clean up the drawing together. This is all about fun, especially with a character like Bruni. He's just cute. We just want to make him cute, have a good time, so that at the end of the drawing we can look back at it and just smile a little bit. So, Bruni is a great, such a fun character, and hundreds of artists at Disney worked on this character. This is not just me by any means, this is hundreds. And that goes from the designer of the character, through storyboards, and then modeling, rigging, and animation, which is when we move the character. And then there's a whole bunch of other departments, especially for Bruni, like effects and lighting that were so important. So remember, this is such a group effort. And today we're just going to try to channel that cuteness and just have some fun drawing Bruni. So how about we get started and we'll go slow. Uh, and really this is just about having fun. So let's draw this cute little fire salamander together and uh, so we can have something to look back and smile at. Okay, let's get started. You can see I've already chosen red. I always like to draw with a red undercolor. Um, it it kind of helps you keep loose, and, and if you're using a red pencil, just try to draw real light. So as you can see here, I'm starting with the head of Bruni, which is kind of like a D shape. I, I always think of it as a D kind of on its side. It's a very simple shape, and again, just be really loose with the pencil. Um, you don't have to press too hard. And I'm going to start to draw the eyes in here, so I usually like to put the eyes uh, so that the top of the head kind of goes through the center. And really with Bruni, the bigger the eyes, the better. Uh, go for cuteness. These eyes are hilariously big, and when they're looking up at Elsa, that's, that's just my favorite thing ever. So draw them nice and big. I actually drew them a little too high here, so I'm going to lower that a little bit. There we go. Okay, but the great thing about drawing a red and being loose first is if you make little mistakes like this, you, you, it doesn't matter because you're going to clean this up later. These are all just kind of guidelines and you really want to draw through every shape. So let's go ahead and put the pupil in there. I, I, I like to do this right away even though it's a detail uh, just because then it looks like Bruni's looking back at you and what better way to draw Bruni than to have these cute eyes just looking back at you the whole time. And this is all for fun so just be loose, have fun, uh, and let's make Bruni as cute as possible. So really, the, you know what? A circle is one of the hardest things to draw, so take your time with that. Be loose. I usually draw these little lines down from the pupils. It kind of helps to tell me where the neckline goes here. So the neck, he's got this very long neck when he perks up, and, uh, and it's just such a fun shape. Uh, designer Bill Schwab just did some amazing shape language here that was really fun for the animators to play with. So I've got this, and it's kind of a weird shape that goes into his body. You know, you have this this long neck and these big eyes and then this cute, cute little body and uh, and kind of flat along the bottom there. If you squint, actually, it kind of starts to look, doesn't it kind of look like a, a boot or something? Uh, you know, I, I can almost imagine uh, someone just putting that on. There's, like, if you don't draw this, but if you put little laces in here, uh, then you have a little boot with Bruni's head on it. Look at the top of the boot here, you know, like a little sock. Um, so yeah, please don't draw this all in, but just, you know, think simple shapes. That's how I remember drawings and, and how to put the character together. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back to the head here for a second and just put the smile on. Now the smile is just this fun, big smile. And this is where the center line really helps. You can kind of arch the top of the lip up there and just curl around the eyeballs. And now the top of the corners kind of align with the pupils almost. They go right up to those cute little cheeks at the top of the D. Um, so here we go, it's it's this little curvy shape, almost like a W that's just kind of stretched out. And you really get that cute upper lip. So as you can see, he's starting to take shape. We got that nice long neck and I'm just gonna draw, he's got this little pattern in here where his neck goes. 
uh, just kind of draw these pieces in. And remember, we're going to clean this all up later, so don't worry about being too clean. You can draw through shapes so that later we know where the pieces are going. So his legs are just these chubby little things. They're so cute. Uh, it's got these like little S curves, we call them. It's the shape of an S. And, and you can see where I just drew that circle. That's like his pudgy little forearms. So I just, I just love the way these look. And you know, when the animators are animating these, they're like little squishy things. And it really his, his toes are just these like little, I think of them as like little pizza slices, little triangles. And uh, they're just the cutest little thing. I, I loved when the animators would squish these and then you show the bottom of his palm and, and, uh, and then in sound, they just added these cute little like sounds as he walked around and just er all these details just make Bruni such a cute character. So again, I'm just gonna draw that leg on the other side here. Let just think of these little cute little finger pizza slices. You can see I actually like curved off the bottom of the boot there uh, just to just to give him that chest piece. But you know, I'm drawing through all these lines so that later on when we clean up, we kind of know where everything connects. So it's okay to just kind of keep those under drawings. You don't have to erase anything right away. Just be loose and we're just trying to get the feeling of the character. Again, these little pizza slices. All these little things, to, you know, in Frozen 2, Bruni just had to be cute. I mean, that's one of his biggest moments, you know, right after Elsa chases him down as the fire. It's just really important that they have a connection and uh, and it was just such a fun sequence uh, to animate, to have these big eyes staring up at Elsa and have his little tongue come out and catch the snowflake. Um, but really, we just wanted the audience during that moment to, to see Elsa's connection with nature and just really fall in love uh, with this character, Bruni. Okay, let's go ahead and throw his tail in there. Uh, his tail, you know, I, I usually put it up, I think of it like a dog wagging his tail a little bit, uh, but just a, a really simple tail to show that he's happy, and uh, and it's got a really simple curve to it. Uh, he's starting to come together here. We're starting to see uh, Bruni and just be real rough here. I'm going to draw the under uh, belly of his tail here, uh, and you can see I'm just drawing through the legs there because, you know, we're going to go clean up and choose the lines we want to keep clean later on. Okay, I'm just going to, sometimes I throw his eyebrows on here not uh, for my rough sketches I tend to leave them out because his eyes just look so cute above the head there I'm probably going to regret drawing those in later but let's keep them there for now and then his little nose we start to add in the details those nostrils are actually like pretty small nostrils uh, again just to really emphasize his smile and his eyes his we kept his nose pretty small he's got these little design patterns on here now all these little designs on his back and his head they're actually uh, little designs for the fire. Okay, as I said, I regretted those eyebrows. I'm delirious. Okay, we'll leave this for now. We'll come back to that and clean up. But here we go, really simple shapes. And as you can see while I was drawing, always start with the big, simple shapes, and then we kind of work down to the detail. You know, I'll just really quickly sketch in these little diamond shapes on his back and, and on his legs, just to indicate where they might be during our cleanup. Let's just recenter him here. Now, I do like working digitally sometimes because I can do everything in the spot. And if I need to just, you know, change a proportion or scale something, it's, it's really quick to do. Uh, let's just choose black here for the cleanup. And I'm already noticing that, you know, I feel like I drew his jaw a little big. So here's something neat. And uh, when you work digitally, you can just kind of squash that up a little bit there. And, uh, you know, sometimes when his chin gets a little big, it takes away from his cuteness. So let's just bring that back down. This is definitely, you know, there's pros and cons to working digitally and on paper. I love working on paper. It keeps you loose and, and I hope you're, you get to try both here, but digitally, um, just speed wise, I, I can move a little quicker. So as we start to clean up Bruni, you know, we've drawn all our basic shapes there. And we're just gonna kind of soften that D shape a little bit, draw the top of his head here. Uh, yeah, just just try to keep that flat and graphic. I, I love the simplicity of Bruni, just keeping things really, really clean and simple and just letting those eyes do all the talking. Now at the cleanup phase, you're still, you're not just drawing over the red lines, you're, you're still making choices uh, that are gonna kind of inform the drawing. Here's the circle. So it's so weird, the circle is the hardest thing to draw. I, I always have a hard time with it. It is such a simple shape, but to draw such a perfect circle. See, look how many little strokes I'm taking. 
it, it's a good thing to keep in mind that even when Disney animators are drawing characters, it's not perfect every time. So your drawing does not need to be perfect every time. Take your time, put it together. I know when you see stuff on the screen or drawings of books, it looks like, wow, these people can draw so easily. No, I mean, every drawing is hard work and, and, uh, and we put a lot of time into this stuff. So take your time. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. And as you can see this, I, I take my time with these circles. They're not easy. But we're going to keep that. I, I usually, you can see the top of the circles, they usually darken a little bit there, uh, just to kind of emphasize the top lid. So, yeah, I've got that, got that little circle. I put it even like a little bottom eyelid there just to cuten it up a little bit. And now I'm going to draw his pupils. Again, I like to start with the eyes just because put the most time into it. And if I get that right and the character's looking back at me, it's kind of like the character saying, hey, draw me right. Okay, here we go. Got the big black pupil in there. So he's looking back at us. Yeah, and these, you know, I might even scale these up afterwards because... Really, I mean, those eyes, they, they're, they're, they call them the window to the soul. And when Bernie's looking back at you with those big eyes, you want those as cute as possible. So, okay, I have a kind of dark reft in here. Okay. And they're just these really cute big black pupils. Okay, and I am going to try just scaling them up a little bit. Again, another, another neat thing to working digitally. Um, you know, you can do this on paper, too, just by filling it in a little bigger but uh but i do like the ease of of this so here we go we got these big pupils and like i said we're still making choices during the cleanup phase um to to just really make this drawing feel and look like bruni so again let's go back to this w shape just really trying to soften the lines and really trying to let that mouth follow the contour of of the circle there put his little cheek corners in there just adding these little details that, that all come together to make Bruni. I'm actually gonna lower his nose a little bit, it's a little too high, and put those little nostrils in, so cute. You can see in the movie when he's breathing heavily, those little tiny nostrils, the animators actually put little breaths in there, which was so neat uh, and cute to see, those tiny details. Okay, and as we connect his neck, we're just gonna soften that shape a little bit um, when the, when that D shape kind of goes down to that straight line, it, it does get a little too graphic. So just gonna soften those neck corners and follow his chest up here and just kind of make those little choices that make Bruni who he is. Here's another thing that's hard to draw, straight lines, look at that. Um, it's, it's the simple stuff that's really complicated for some reason. So drawing a perfectly straight line is tough, but again, none of this has to be perfect. We're just trying to have fun uh, and, and draw a cute little uh, Bruni. So now I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the character here. When I, when I saw Bruni in one of the first screens of Frozen, I just fell in love with the character and I was beyond excited to learn that uh, I'd be able to help supervise the character. Now we had a team of animators that work on this character. And in fact, it's a te whole team of the studio that works on this, you know, from modeling and rigging design and then story artists everybody there's look artists there's lighters there's effects artists was a big component of this character so it's really not one person that works on this character it's it's more like 50 to 100 i mean hundreds of people could work on a simple character like this who's only in the movie for minutes but a lot of hard work goes into a character uh, to look and feel the way it does and i'm really proud to be part of the team that kind of helped to shape them Okay, so you can see here I'm just drawing those leg shapes in. Now, Bruni was just such a fun reveal on the movie, too. If you haven't seen the movie, you should probably see it. But, uh, you know, it's on Disney+. Plus, and it was such a fun reveal to see this fire kind of chasing down Elsa. And to learn that Bruni is kind of this... Was just kind of this scared, anxious uh, fire spirit. And, you know, not not evil or mad at all. Just just kind of scared and when she corners him that's really what we kept in mind almost like a scared animal uh like a squirrel or or a dog that was just kind of cornered um but but uh, just super cute and when we do that that chase and it's and it's scary and it's intense 
and then we reveal that it's Bruni is just one of my favorite parts uh, in the movie. And, you know, about a team of probably about uh, seven or eight animators animated that section and just just brought the cuteness. The snowflake, the licking the eyeball, the little walks, uh, the little head tilts. I think uh, people had a lot of fun uh, with that area. So as you can see, I'm just choosing the little details to clean up and, uh, you know, especially Bruni's legs here. You can see the underdrawings in red underneath and, you know, when I draw the bottom of his belly here, um, you know, you can kind of see where those lines connect, which is why you draw through those shapes uh, in your rough. So that you just kind of have a guideline to see where everything connects. And I'm just roughing in the shapes here. Um, and I'll do the one on his back here. Now, if you look closely, uh, the VizDev team, I think it was Brittany and Lee, did, did a lot of just great designs for the four spirits. You know, Bruni is one of the four spirits and he represents fire. And all these little designs uh, have just these amazing, unique um, designs within them. So uh, take a look in the film. They're in the crystals, they're in Elsa's dress. They're, they're just kind of everywhere. And, and it's a really big theme in the movie. So I'm gonna just draw those in the tail here. And look at that, we have our brunies starting to come together. Uh, I did a little zoom in, zoom out there for you for some reason, here we go, boom. Okay, so, you know what, uh, just gonna clean up a few things here. I always like putting this little white speck in his eyeballs, like the light is hitting that corner there. It just kinda helps to, to bring that cuteness. There we go. Okay, so we have a pretty, pretty clean drawing here, and you know what? You can do this at home if you like, if you have colored pencils or markers, or if you are working in Photoshop. But, uh, you know, Bruni is really only three colors, so I'm just going to really quickly throw some color in here. And what I love about Bruni's color is that it changes in the movie. So when he is on fire and kind of anxious and scared, uh, he is one color. And then as he starts to cool down and the fire leaves his back, uh, he changes color and I just I just love this and you know a lot of people put a lot of hard work into that and again just the effects on this you, you have to go back and watch that section to really appreciate it but everything from when Bruni gets angry and there's little sparks on his back and later on when he just nuzzles in Elsa's hand and cools off and the fire goes down and you see him change color just all these little details that um, again, maybe a hundred people put into this character and work collectively is just one of the greatest things about Disney animation, the collaboration, uh, the efforts from every department to help make Bruni a character that's memorable and, and has all these unique things about him. So you can see here, I'm, and again, I'm not a color person. I, it's a very simple color for Bruni. The animators really just focus on motion and, and someone else will light and do the look and the scales on the on the character. Um, but I'm just gonna throw these really basic sh uh, color shapes in. Now this, this light blue was really helpful for Bruni's smile. See how that, it just connects to his bottom lip there and you can really clearly see his smile now. So color is a big component to making the character read. And we even, you know, it goes across his underbelly, but it's also on the little pads under his feet. So when you see him walk, you get to see that contrast in color from the dark on the top of his foot to the light underneath. And I, I really thought that little detail just added uh, this this great like clarity to seeing his, his, little, his little paws touch the ground. Okay, I got some little purple in here um, and just, just playing around with the color. But that's our friend Bruni, and she loved this character, loved working on him, and, and I hope you enjoyed seeing Bruni in the movie, because what a joy to work on, and and just the cuteness, and just everything. I wish there was more Bruni. Maybe one day there will be, but for now, that's our Bruni from Frozen 2. Thank you so much for coming to draw with me. Remember, take your time, have fun. And, and draw Bruni in lots of different poses. He's a fun character. Have him running around, have him licking snowflakes, have him on fire, kind of scared or a little angry, and uh, just have fun with the character. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, check out the other How to Draw Disney characters online, and thanks for drawing with me.